worship leader's secret. You're in the key of F, and the next song is in the key of A. This is uh, how many worship leaders would do that. We finish with the first song. You, which most likely Probably, is the yeah. last word. Probably. You, you say, yes, Lord Jesus, yes, Jesus, yes, Lord, yes, please, yes, and we thank you, Jesus. I just move the capo and I, I pray so that people close their eyes and they don't realize that I was just filling time to uh, move a capo. Well, maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's maybe. a smoother way. Maybe. So that you can have people keep their eyes open and you still wind up in the new key. The answer to every modulation is you've got to provide the five chord of the new key that you're going to. The dominant establishes the new tonic. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's talk about how to go up a half step or a whole step because that's a really important skill. If you're in the key of C, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop your bass two whole steps and then you're gonna make that your new dominant chord, your five chord, and then raise the bass up a fourth. You've gone from an A flat up to a D flat. So you're in the key of C, Drop your bass B flat, A flat, and then up to D flat. Mm -hmm. Easy as pie. Mm -hmm. So I could sing, Lord, lift me higher. Lord, lift me higher. Lord, lift me higher. Yes. Yeah. Praise him. That's nice. How is it? I feel like. That wasn't actually a song, though. That was, uh... Well, it was a really short song, but uh, oh. Oh. pretty much it did what we needed it to do, you know, which okay. was uh, to yeah. go higher. Okay, well, that was to go up a half step. Let's go up a whole step. How do we do that? Up a whole step, in some ways, is easier um, because it's more diatonic. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to walk your bass down diatonically, so you're going to go down to a B, then to an A, and then raise it up a uh, up to the D, up a fourth. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the way that sounds the best, I find, is when you have your bass down on that A, rather than just suddenly playing a dominant chord, play a G over A, and then resolve it to that A, and then go to a D. That is using more common tones with the former key and tying in the common tones to the new key. So at this moment, I'm still in C. C, B, A, G chord. I think I'm still in C. Everything in there doesn't have any sharps or flats. Yeah. I'm, I'm still Completely in C. diatonic to C. But by the time I make it an A chord... You have that C sharp clear. in there. You have to go to D. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, very nice transition. Most people in the congregation don't really notice going up a half step. Don't even notice going up a whole step. All they know is something just made me want to stand up and sing louder. In worship these days, because we're more guitar driven, we don't change keys during a song all that often. But uh, in keyboard driven music, it's, uh, it's a much more common kind of thing. Certainly. Um, but especially going from song to song, it's a very helpful thing to know how to get there. So find the five chord of the new key that you're going to, play that, and most of the time, that's, that's all you need. Sometimes you want to be just a little smoother or you want to have a, a different uh, technique. So let's talk about uh, some of those other ways to get from first key to the second key. Um, the first we shall call old loop, new loop. Well, that's a good one. Old loop, new loop is very easy. If I was in the key of E and I'm going to the key of G and my old loop was one, five, six, four, but my tempo is going to be kind of a similar thing, then while I'm talking or whatever it is that's happening, I play my old loop. And then, oh, sorry. And then while I'm playing my old loop, I just start on the new one. My rhythm, my tempo was still the same, and something shifted, but I was talking or there was something else going on, so I could move from one to the other. It really is just a direct modulation. I didn't have to do anything fancy. I just play the old loop, I play the new loop, and by then, 
the new key is in everybody's mind. Now, if you're looking for a nice smooth motion, you could find that five chord in the new key, but if the five chord wasn't in the old key, it's gonna sound a little bit awkward. So what you're looking for is a common chord, something that belonged to the old key, that also belongs to the new key, and then you play a five chord in the new key, and, uh, and you're in a new area. Like when we went up that whole step, it was that G over A, that G chord, is the common chord, common chord, otherwise known as the pivot chord. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's what swings you from the old key into the new key. So let's say we wanted to go from the key of C to the key of F. What's in common? What's in common? Well, C just happens to be the dominant of F. So uh, all we need to do uh, is just make it a, maybe a dominant seven chord. Just go right into F. And there you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm going from C to G, I could find A minor. That's a six in the, in the key of C, but it's a two, a two in the key of G. And then I'm there, and I'm not quite sure when it happened, but at some point, I there just we were. went from C to G. All right, so looking for a common chord is helpful. So we can do old loop, new loop. Um, we can do a common chord. Um, sometimes it's hard to find a common chord because they are distantly related or what we sometimes call chromatic third relation uh, keys, like C to E, C to E flat, C to A, C to A flat. They're all a third away and either three or four sharps or flats away, so it's hard to find a common chord. In those cases, it's easiest to find a common tone, um, such as if we're going from the key of C to E flat, you have a G in common so just so long as that note is kind of prevalent in between the two chords, you can slide right into that new key without much of a problem. Let me try that. Lord, lift me higher. Lord, lift me higher. And I, because I stayed there on that same note, it was like the, the chord shifted underneath me, but I was already there. Likewise, if we wanted to go from C to E, that's that C other e. distantly related third. But you've got C, E, G, that's mm -hmm. your C chord, and you're going to the key of E, so let's just harp on that E a little bit. Mm -hmm. Lord, lift me higher, Lord, lift me higher. I just stayed on the E, and the rest of the chord shifted underneath, and Again, it felt like there was a change, but because I stayed on the same note, it didn't sound unusual. Um, all right. What if we wanted to go to, from C to A flat? If you want to go from C to A flat, you got the C in common. So just ride that C. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. That works. What if we wanted to go from C to A? From C to A, you keep the E in common. You've got the E in both of those. Mm -hmm. Now, sooner or later, you have to play the five to really, to really establish, establish. That, that new key, but you use the common tone in order to slide into it. And then <clears throat> the five chord lets you realize, oh, I wanted to stay there because now that feels like home, now that I've gone five and away. All right, now we've talked about three ways to modulate. There's the old loop, new loop. There's... Um, common chord, common chord or pivot chord, and there is common tone. Common tone, not a pivot tone, but a common tone. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the only other thing you could do is move the capo and go directly from one to the other, Direct and that's modulation. not a terrible thing to do. Um, so you know what? You could go from the key of C to any other key, and successfully for the rest of your life without having to work hard. And with the congregation not being taken by surprise, but still worship, if their hearts are right. If not. Otherwise, if you modulate wrong, you pull out the silent roll call cards and write you an anonymous note. When those are done. And you know you don't want one of those. But don't read it.